Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Sports Federation TV. I'm Elton Davids, I'm your host. And tonight we've got an exciting lineup. We catch up with uh, Mr. Young, Jay Julius, who's come back on holiday from his uh, pro trip as a pro cyclist. We catch up with the Boerland Sports Awards that happened last week. Right now I'm joined in the studio by Mr. Julius. Good evening and welcome. It's been a while, young man. I uh, Thank you very much for being here. I want to know a bit about you. I mean, you've come through, you grew up in where? I c come from uh, Alsace River, Cape Town, and uh, born there, and raised there, and uh, proud to, to say that I'm from Alsace River. And, and then from there you went to Belgium. Tell us, uh, uh, before we get to the Belgium but first tell me a bit about uh, what sport are you involved in. Let's start there. Uh, I'm doing cycling as a, on a professional level. Uh, it started when I was 13 years of age. And I uh, started at the Velodrome in Balvo, just for a little bit of, of a start to, for s to get some skills. And uh, it went over to the road cycling, which uh, I'm now busy with. And yeah, um, very successful in it. Thank you. Before we get to the success, I want to know a bit about Belgium. How did you manage to get to Belgium, to the, to the cycling school? Let, tell us that bit first. Well, it started off when uh, I started my dad introduced me into cycling uh, at the uh, Giro da Capo. I think I don't know which year it was, but uh, yes, he uh, showed me around. You know how the professionalism is off the bike. You know, and you know just getting into it. And there was a guy by the name of Rikeyets that uh, was one of the the guys at the Belgium uh, team. And uh, he found it very interesting for my dad to get me in the cycling like that, you know, showing me, th showing me the preparation of the bike, you know, which riders have to go through the start of the race, how they prepare, what, how they get in the zone, how they warm up. And uh, yeah, we got in contact like that. And uh, I started cycling in the PPA league and uh, always kept contact and got invited for two months to Europe just to see what it's all about cycling in the you know, where, you know, every young cyclist needs to be. And I got over there and I s my eyes went open to cycling and uh, just the love of the sport became even more and more. And yeah, so on we went and yeah, became much bigger, much bigger every year. And yeah, the promise, the promise in my cycling be also became much more bigger because I was very hungry for the sport. I loved it. It was a big passion. And uh, yeah, it just went from there, you know, and uh, been good, been good, really. So, for how long were you in Belgium? How many years was your stint there? You were at the school. Tell us a bit about what, li what life was like in Belgium, as, as doing school and, and racing, high okay. school. Okay, uh, yeah, I, s I went to Fairburn College when I was here. Just before, just before that, I then started cycling, and... Uh, because of the cycling and the, the year that I got invited to, I then had such a good season of two months only being there, you know, growing up with the Belgians and the most in international riders of England coming down to Belgium because Bel Belgium is, was the base of all cycling, you know. Uh, and then I went over there and I did, I surprised them, you know. And when I got over there, yeah, I was just racing and, uh, the next year they invited me out again. I then did a better season. And they told me, you know, with the cycling and the schooling, my parents in South Africa, they were, they were a little bit, you know, worried about my, my schooling, which is also important, you know, as a parent, you gotta guide your son and your, your kids, you know, the right direction. So, yes, uh, we then had to make a decision. It was a very quick decision after coming back to South Africa. And, yeah, well, uh, there was schooling, and I was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta do something. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, I'm motivated to, to, to move overseas, but also, you know, it's, it's my family that is a big part of my life, you know, and, and I'm moving into a Belgian family, and yeah, and so then they, they, they told me I need to ride for a Belgium team, and uh, so that's how I got there, and it just got every year better and better coming to South Africa for one month 
and then uh, going back in January because of the winter and everything. So it was a very hard life, you know, it wasn't easy. You know, I was winning races, it was very nice, you know. But like they say, the behind scenes, it's always, always difficult. But I kept going, you know, and it's a big, it was a big motivation. And uh, yes, cycling, the cycling school was great. It was good, uh, I think maybe, maybe, Maybe the thing that kept me going, you know, for 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 what I needed to 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 do in you know in the cycling, and uh, yeah, just um, I was very happy to be on a cycling school to to be among uh, a lot of uh, I don't know in cycling there's a big guy called Thomas de Gent, he come from our school at one stage in the Giro, up uh, Star Star Velo uh, in the Giro, he comes from my school the Willer School. And uh, Eric van Lanke, that's sports director at Garmin, he comes from my school, so he's my sir. And I was always guiding the riders in the school, telling them how to train, how to do uh, the winter, to not eat too much, you know, to, to live for the sport, you know, off the bike and on the bike. And uh, yes, yeah, so uh, it was, it was some, some experience. And then going from there, you went to Singapore. Yes, yes. That was a... An interesting experience. Was that your first uh, representation of wearing a South African jersey? Indeed, it was. It was my first uh, rep representation for for South Africa, which I was really honoured by by racing for them. I mean, uh, Singapore. I never, you know, everybody. I heard a lot of people speak. A lot of professional athletes that I know speaking about uh, youth uh, Olympic games. But the Youth Olympic Games, I never thought, you know, it would be so big. And uh, like you, I mean, you were our sports director, so uh, it was really good to be there. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it it's, it's was a good experience for a rider and also for the other riders that was there with the BMXing and the mountain biking and uh, for the road. Uh, it was something, something special, yes. And I mean, for you to get a, a, a first place in that in that in that final was was hard work. But uh, you you as an as a novice international rider, you kept your nerve. Was that based on, on on coming out of Belgium and all the racing you did there? Do you, do you think that at, at that young age that that's that was the drive? I believe it was. Uh, I trained really hard for the event. Uh, very motivated also because uh, I had my one friend. Uh, Boris Filet that actually won. We were training together the time being there and we were like, yeah, we, we have to make a, of a good race. So the, the field which I raced against in Europe, coming to, Sing to Singapore, the Youth Olympic Games, was all the riders I raced against as a junior level in Belgium. So I knew the riders. But also a good result at Singapore with the South African team. And from then onwards, it was like every result was, was good, you know. And uh, it keeps me motivated so to, to be getting these results for South Africa. And uh, maybe, maybe in 2016 at Rio, maybe another possibility to, to be there. Absolutely, because I mean, you've, 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 you've now come through the ranks and you've raced at, at, at international level, even at, at senior level, you've, you've won the SA jersey. What was that like? I mean, now being almost a regular in the, in the national team. It, it has been become normal, you know. Uh, be riding in the team with Daryl MP and, and, and Louis Manches and Willie Smith and all these big names. Uh, it's it's really it's 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 good for a rider, you know, to, to be around it, surrounded in the in the in the with the likes of good riders, you know. But also motivation for them and for myself, you know. Uh, cycling is a team sport, you know, you gotta do it together. If you do it individually you don't get a result. If you finish second and third if you put all your, 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 your pennies into one basket, you're going to get the result, you know, as a team. So cycling has become now more based as team racing, you know. In the past, it was more individual, but now it's be, been, uh, been pushed into that. So, Let's yeah. uh, take a short air break, and when we come back, we'll catch up with Mr. Gilly. See you now. Welcome back to Sports Federation TV. We're chatting to Jay Julius. We're catching up and finding out what life is like being a professional cyclist. As part of one of the features we're doing over the last couple of weeks and going forward, uh, we're chatting about careers in sport. And one of them is being a professional cyclist. 
Jade, you're now with a professional team, Bonitas Pro Cycling Team. Tell us, how did you get onto the team? Uh, yes, it was uh, something very difficult for me to... to, to uh, last year, I decided it's been long enough that I was living in Europe. So, at that stage, I was like, um, I was going to start something new with my life. I was a little bit over cycling. Uh, also, I haven't. I wanted to come back to my parents because I've been living six years overseas, and I just found that uh, I had enough of cycling. I thought it's over ten years is very difficult. You know, you have to having to find yourself. You don't know where you are, and uh, so my dad is a good friend with uh, Barry Austin, sports director by Benitez. And uh, he knew who I was and the amount of talent I had, you know. And when he heard I was going to stop with cycling, and he, he gave me a second chance, you know, which I till today appreciate because I think it was the best decision that, you know, a person out of that could make for me, you know. And uh, you have to really be lucky to have people like that in your life. So I was from 1st September last year in South Africa. S did my first race Dome to Dome. And uh, yeah, finished third. And yeah, it, it was, I was racing for my European team still, Belgium team. And uh, I was racing two, two races, I think Dome to Dome and another, another race after that. And uh, Malcolm Langer gave me a little bit of a stagiaire ride in the team. And uh, from there, I felt myself growing into the Bonitas team. And yes, it was 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 in my second 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 step, you know, to to cycling back again. And uh, yes, uh, I'm really happy to do a full season with them, and it's been good. Really enjoyed it. W what's it like riding with those big names? I mean, you come from overseas, and you come back into a team or you come into a team that's right up there racing with the, with the best of the best in a the, in the country and here you, you kind of walk into the team. What's it like racing with Lutanda Kaka and, and Malcolm Langer and all of those guys as part of your mentorship program? Well, at first it was a very, you know, you come, you come as new to the team. Uh, the riders in the team doesn't know you really that well. And like in a team, you got to takes time to work, you know, with the riders, with the other riders, having to know them, having to know how the team races and how we plan and how we go into the race because every team has a different strategy, you know. And uh, it took time, which, um, which was good for, for me as a young rider because I, I was maybe the youngest rider in the team. And uh, looking up to, to Latendo and Her Herman for sure and all the guys and Malcolm Langer also, that is a very, is a winning machine. The sports is our boss, you know, and he gives us a lot of guidelines. And uh, yes, you know, it's been it's been an honor to ride for them, you know, and under them, you we have we have grown, like I say, you know, in a team you have to grow, and everybody knows what type of rider you are. You have your job, you either the climber for the team or you're the sprinter that has to finish it at the end. So yes, I I'm more the climber rider, so. I had a I had a good Mazanzi tour this year, but it's it's really nice to be in a team like like Bonitas, where everybody's on the same page, want, wanting to win races. And and uh, on a lighter side, as the uh, as the newcomer to the team, did they make you did you before do an initiation ceremony? Did they make you wash the wheels, all of those kinds of things, or not really? Does that not happen at pro level? <laughs> No, no, they, they respected me much, you know. They knew, they knew who I was and also after my first race, you know, finishing third on podium and stuff, you could see the big guys, they, they had a lot of respect for, for me, you know, and in either way, respect comes both ways and in the team, everybody was handled the same way. Uh, <laughs> that is funny because, no, I've never, I've never had, had that. I've never made you do anything strange. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since you've joined the team, you've now obviously grown as a cyclist more than we from a step up from Belgium, right? Yes. And you've won too many races to mention. What is the highlight of you in the last season? Well, give us two highlights. 
Well, I'd say my highlight for this year was uh, riding a good clover tour. A clover tour that was in the low felt and uh, in Peter Marysburg there. And uh, it's been, you know, that, that was the highlight for me this year. I mean, I got the, the mountain jersey. I won one stage in front of her, uh, Willie Smith. And uh, yeah, being being after after Dylan Dylan Girdleston being uh, you know being ill, I needed to take over the role, you know. And uh, I did it. Uh, we finished third, but we got more out of the race than, than what we what we had to to get. And I think the second highlight was uh, World Championship, which was in Ponferrada, Spain, this year, uh, riding for the likes of Louis Manches, uh with Rob Hunter as post director. Uh, like I said, uh, we had to put all our pennies into one basket, you know. I, I had good form that time after winning Dome to Dome and uh, local races in South Africa. And the prep was really good. I was feeling great, but we then needed to ride for one guy. It was set as our plan. And, you know, we never, we never won the race, but we went out showing that who South Africa really is. And uh, we got a lot of respect by all cycling nations for doing it in that way, you know. And yes, uh, I think that was the highlight because I really felt good, you know. And uh, Louis Manches, which finished in the vault of this year, a couple of, you know, a couple of stages yep. in the top, top three, top five, top ten, you know, it's it's you're going against the world's best, you know. And uh, yes, it's been it's been great. I, I want to pick up on, on on that bit that you just mentioned now. That you had to ride for Louis Mankis, even though you were you in your mind you were in top form. Mm. Explain to the viewers why or, or how does a team dynamic work in an event? Like you said earlier, you were a climber, and you the you you do you work harder on the climbs for for the sprinter for the finish. I, explain that to to people because people don't understand how all of that fits in together. Yes, it's it's for the for the people that doesn't really know cycling really that good. It's you know in a team we all have. We all we all there, the cyclists. We all at that level, uh, but everybody has a fair fair chance, you know. And at that moment, the sports director has to decide what's his game plan, you know. Cycling is you can consider a big race like World Championship, like playing the lotto, you know. But at that event, you gotta put your cards right, you know. And you gotta. That's why we were selected in that manner. Willie Smith, Louis Manches. Kevin Patton and uh, the likes of me. So at that, you know, you got to put your whole team together. I was good, but Louis just came from the Volta. He's on a much different level. He's also South African champion, uh, under 23 still, but South African champion, you know. So he, he has so much of a big engine, which I'd have to, but you gotta dis decide, you know, as a sports director. It was going uphill. He just came from the Volta, and he needed to do what he needed to do. He was lost the under 23. So I got another year I was as under 23 next year, so it will be my chance next year. So, you know, in cycling, you also gotta be a domestic and learn how it is, you know, to be a leader coming from where, where domestic is coming from, you know, learning to go get bottles, you know, making it the, 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 the situation a little bit lighter for, for Louis in the race, you know, to, to not spend too much energy. But when he, when he does spend his energy, it's, it's full gas, you know. So uh, he went, and he really went. And he said, you know, the Australians were chasing him down because they never expected us, you know, South Africa, to do what we did. And uh, we threw them out also. But in the end, you know, they didn't, because he was a top favorite, he finished the year, the year before second yeah. at Walt. He then needed to prove that again. And then we then had, he had to be our leader and we had to ride for him. It was as simple as that. And, and, and you pushed as much as you could to make him get a better position. Was that the aim? The aim was to get him so far as possible to the final, the last 30 to 40 kilometers. But the plan was already to, uh, to shake on the tree, already at 60 kilometers, because I wouldn't say it was a negative race. It was, you know, a, a race where riders look at uh, the top favorite. If they lift their, their butts and they go, they got to be on it, you know. But uh, like I say, the new generation of cycling has been, 
been going more into team racing, you know. It's either for one guy or nothing, you know. D just stop there. What, what do you mean by negative racing? Negative racing meaning a lot of teams looking at riders, you know, and riding off riders. You know, if, if Louis goes and then you have another team that just look at him and go with him, you know, but they wouldn't go with him to ride with him, you know, just to win off his wheel, you know. So, 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 it's, so it's a bit like other codes of sport where you have man-to-man -man marking where people will watch what you're doing and then if you attack, or i.e. push harder up a hill, they would counter that and or either sit with you so you don't get too much of a gap. Is that is that I understand it correctly? Yes, sir. Yes, that is how it is. It's uh, it's it's hard to explain, but when as a rider, it's we do it so automatically, you know, in 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 the in the way of cycling because it's either riding for for one rider or riding individually, and which is a big lot, you know. When you when you ride for one guy, you finish it off like. You can see with Mark Cavendish and the team, they do everything t to get him at the finish and he has to win it and the whole team wins, you know. Mm. It's, yeah, I guess. Interesting you use Mark Cavendish and not anybody else. We'll leave, we'll leave that just there. Tell me a bit about this, uh, the cycle that you did from Joburg to Cape Town. I mean, that, was, that must have been fun. What was that about? Yes, uh, that was for the change, change like BDs of uh, the Novo, no disc. Uh, project that they have going every year and it was a charity ride from Johannesburg to Cape Town relay with five teams and uh, yes that was very fun it was right through the night day and night uh, beautiful I think uh, a really good experience uh, I'll do it again but uh, yeah it was with four guys we rode through we started in Soweto Johannesburg CBD and we ended up in Cape Town. Uh, we did it in three days. Sure. And incredible experience. What is the total distance? The total distance was 1,500 kilometers. Uh, each team got to do about 500 kilometers uh, right through the night. But uh, as, as professional riders, it was, was to take it easy. But uh, <laughs> how we... we when you get when the professional riders get on their bike, we we think immediately of racing, and we we had a little we had, we had a time of racing, but we also had fun at it, you know. Uh, and the Novo the Novo Nordisk uh, charity they appreciated our our riding, and it was was nice. I mean, your easy is like 45 k's an hour, <laughs> Com compared to com compared to other people whose uh, whose who's easy rides are 20 k average. You could say that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, now, so now you've come to the end of, of your season this now. Yes. What's happening now for the next two months? Uh, we have now a two-week break. Started from the 94.7. Uh, our racing week actually went a little bit further on because of the United Mandela uh, race that they had in Pretoria. And uh, so, yes, now it's uh, off season for two weeks. Uh, really enjoying it. Back to be back in Cape Town. Been living the whole year in Johannesburg. One life, cycling, train, eat. And it's every day like that. And now just, you know, switch off. And do a little bit of normal, you know. Enjoy the beach, you know, go here. Yeah, do, do normal stuff that I, cyclists or each individual as a cyclist like to enjoy. Uh, for myself, I, I, li I come back to my family because I don't get to see them the whole year. And then, yes, yeah, just to catch up, you know, on, on life. But now you're off the bike or you're on the bike during this period? Is it the active rest or is it the complete rest? It's completely rest. So n n you don't even touch a bicycle at all? No, I, d I don't even want to see my bike at the moment because, you know, it's for me, mental. it's a mental thing and also for the body to recuperate, you know. Uh, People, some people think in cycling, you, we machines, you know, to, to keep going every day, 200 kilometers on the bike. But it's, you know, we're just normal people that, that do it as a job, you know, and, and you also have to come back to, a, as an individual, you have to come back to, to your normal self and give your body the, 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 the energy, the, the rest it needs, you know, to charge your batteries to go on for the next season again. And it takes a lot of energy a season. So, yeah.
I want to pick up on that, but they just spoke about now. It's a job. I mean, for a lot of people, this is heaven. You get up, ride your bike, you chill, get up, ride your bike. That's what you do. Is that what a day is like in the life of a, of a pro cyclist? Take us through a normal day when you're up in Joburg. Well, in a normal day, I wake up. I wake up at uh, 7 o'clock and uh, have breakfast and I get on the bike at 8 o'clock. Uh, you know, when it's a job, I say it's a job because like every person you have to wake up and you know the next day I got to get on the bike, you have your training program set, you got to email it to, your, to your, your coaches, to your bosses to see that you're training. Uh, and yeah, you wake up, you do your training five hours, you come back at one o'clock, you're so tired, you have lunch, and then you have to rest, you know, you gotta have the same amount of uh, training, but also your rest time also has to be, you know, good, balanced out, you know. So coming to race day, you gotta be ready for, for cycling uh, and what you have to do to, to, to win. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a job, you know. I have to say it's, it's a job, but for me personally, it's, I started out as a, as a hobby, and I have to say it's it's maybe the best 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 thing. I love what I love doing, and I don't see it as a job. It is a job, but I enjoy the fun. You know, it's a passion. It's, it's good. And it, and in terms of nutrition, are you? I mean, people often talk about cycling as being the the drug haven. What kind of supplements are you on? Do you take supplements, uh, or do you just live a healthy, big fat carb diet? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's supplements after hard, hard training, I'd have like, you know, a protein shake, you know, if it's a good intensive ride, a normal, normal four hour ride, I just, you know, eat normal, like, you know, depends, you know, as, as, as what you are in cycling. If you're a climber, you have a special diet. Uh, if you're a sprinter, you also have a special diet because you gotta, you know, you can't, you can't keep light, you know. As a climber, you we eat a lot of salad, you know, uh, nutritional-wise. So it's 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 all, you know, uh, 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 measured, you know, in 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 what you have to eat, what you have to, uh, uh, as as you, like I say, a sprinter, a, uh, attacking rider, breakaway rider, or a climber. So yeah, I mean, I I'm sponsored by Biogen. Uh, on the bike you have energy and it's not really sp really specific you know what you eat you just gotta eat healthy and eat uh, what what you need what the body needs you know I, I don't say eating chips and 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 sweets and and this is good you know but uh, sometimes your body need it you know so yeah uh, and now wait wait to for, uh, for you how long do you see yourself being with this pro team, or is this a step to go back out overseas into a, a, con a continental team? Yes, uh, Bonitas. Uh, I am fortunate to have a good season with them this year. Uh, next year, I will be with MTN, feeder team, up in Potchestrom, JP Fancel. So I signed a contract with them next year. Uh, it is definitely a step forward, you know. Uh, took two steps back to make two, two uh, one step forward two steps forward and uh it's just yeah it's what what it is for next year i'm really excited for for cycling i see myself going another 15 years in the sport it's just it's, the, it's really a beautiful sport when you can travel the world you can see different places you can ride your bike and you can also look after your body you know sport Sport does amazing things to a person. You know, you, you learn of the world, you learn about your body, you learn about medication, you learn how to, 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 to balance your life out, you know. And like they say, you gotta ride the bike to keep, to keep your balance. And it's been, it's been like that for me. What would you say to any aspiring cyclist who wants to be a pro cyclist? How much hard work is it and is it pleasurable to do what you're doing? Firstly, you gotta have the passion. Yeah, it it starts it starts with a passion, it's passion to 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 do anything you know. If you like doing it and you put your head to it and you like this is for me you know, this is cycling. This is what I love doing. That's how I am you know. I wake up every morning 
looking at my bike saying yes we're gonna go out and gonna have fun fun on the bike you know even though sometimes it's it's not fun with the traffic but that's normal you know you you get around that uh it's everything going past past your limit you know and what 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 you you didn't think you you could do you know sometimes i, I think to myself I, I i've never seen myself to be here in the next year or two you know but i've achieved it which is which is like that but for any cyclist that 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 wants to do it i'd say you know Firstly, you you gotta have you gotta have the mindset for it because it's not easy. Nothing is easy in life. You gotta work for it, you know. But uh, firstly, you have to have the passion, and if you have the passion, it comes easy. It comes easy. It's just, the, I mean, the cycling goes with you, you know, because you you motivate it. Even though you come second, you wanna work for it. The next, you have another race, you know, prove yourself again. And yes, it's it's, it's like that, you know. Uh, other people follow you? Are you on, f are you on Twitter? Do you uh, have a Twitter I'm on, yeah, I'm on Twitter at JD Julius. And I'm on Facebook. Yeah, I'm not too much on, on it. Uh, yeah. But that's where people can see where you are. Jade, thank you for your time. It's been fun. All the best with MTN and traveling overseas. Thank and you. we look forward to seeing all the updates and seeing your name in the top 10, in the top 5, uh, and on the podium yeah. going forward. Thank you very much. It was been been good, yeah, and uh, enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks for setting a good example to our youngsters. Thank you. Let's take a short ad break, and when we come back, we'll chat Boland Sports Awards. See you now. <laughs>